all thrill ride designers manipulate positive and negative g-forces but what are they really trying to achieve when they create an ultimate ride one of the theme park industry's most admired visionaries started his career in cinema making special effects for james bond films Today, he is one of the most successful thrill ride designers in the world. Enthusiasts believe that John Wardley has been responsible for many of the greatest rides ever made. When I create a ride, my ultimate goal is the end result, to give people a thrilling, exciting, amazing experience. And that experience is something that we determine in the brief for the design of the ride. So we might be wanting to give people a scary experience or an intimidating one. We might want to enchant them, to baffle them. All these emotions are the emotions that other forms of entertainment manipulate, whether you're in the theatre or the film industry or us in the theme park industry. We are doing the same thing. We're playing with people's emotions and giving people an entertaining time. To manipulate our emotions and give us the thrills we crave, Thrill ride designers use the laws of physics. This ride, Enterprise, is a classic example. It was created in the 1970s and it still inspires designers today. I'm about to be spun round in a circle, vertically upside down, 25 metres in the air. And yet there is nothing going to be holding me in my seat. There are no seat belts, no lap bars, no over-the-shoulder restraints. Nothing is going to hold me in when I am upside down on this wheel, 25 metres in the air. Well, what on earth is it that's holding me in? Well, some of you might say centrifugal force. Well, the physicists don't like people talking about centrifugal force. They talk about centripetal force. But what is this force? Well, it's very simple, really, when you understand. Basically, anybody in motion wants to go in a dead straight line unless some force tries to nudge it off course. So when you throw an object, that object wants to go in a perfect straight line, but gravity pulls you back down to Earth. So when I'm on this wheel spinning around as I am, I don't really want to go around in a circle at all. I want to be projected in a dead straight line. Yet the seat that I'm sitting on is constantly nudging me around in a circle towards the center in order to make me spin around. And the force that that seat is applying to me is what we call centripetal force. So it, it's dead easy when you think about it, and it's also great fun. On this ride, the restraints have a different but equally important role. They create the illusion of being able to fly. This engineering breakthrough was developed for a radical new British ride called Air. It's the first ride in the world where you fly like a bird, and it uses the ultimate in harness technology. When riders embark on air, they pull down a restraint which has twin locks and is computer controlled. Underneath is a remarkable flexible jacket made from neoprene, a synthetic rubber that automatically moulds to the rider's shape so that everyone feels comfortable and is completely safe. Even when the floor falls away and you are tipped face down. Air is another design triumph for John Wardley. His aim is to give the rider the unique sensation of smooth flight. And I am now extremely secure and, to be honest, very comfortable indeed. And it's a good job because in a minute I'm going to be taken about uh, 30 metres in the air and then dropped down a great drop tumbled over on my back, spun around, as if I'm flying. And you really do feel as if you're about to fly. I don't need to uh, hold on with my arms. Here we go, down the first drop, and you're like a bird. You're flying through the air. This is like no other roller coaster. Wow. Now I'm rolling over on my back. It's an amazing sensation turning back over onto my front 
and diving down underground, down from the tunnel, up around, over the heads of everybody below me. Another barrel roll. But you feel as if you are flying where you would want to go if you were a bird. I'm not being wrenched in directions that my body doesn't want to take me. It is so incredibly smooth. And the most beautiful sensation of flight. So there you have it, air, the world's first real flying roller coaster. It just gives you a really good head rush. When you first like go down, it feels like you're gonna fall out because it just drop that. Like. It was really scary, as though like if anything went wrong, you could actually fall out. While some thrill rides are designed to trigger a cocktail of different sensations, others are custom made to achieve a specific psychological effect. With Oblivion, the technology is geared to intimidate you. Oblivion is the first drop roller coaster in the world. While queuing, passengers are told that they could die. Riding Oblivion rates higher on the terror scale than any other ride. The six-ton train climbs very slowly up a vertical rail. It then edges towards a ledge where the track apparently hangs unsupported in mid-air. As the train slips over the edge, it dangles over a 180-foot drop for what seems like an eternity. The riders then hurtle towards the black hole in the ground far below. As they enter the void, they're sprayed with a mist which momentarily conceals the route underground. But before they can comprehend what is going on, Oblivion then spins them in a dark pit for maximum disorientation. The challenge for leading designer John Wardley was to make each moment before the drop as terrifying as possible. Now, purely for psychological effect, we hold you at the top of the drop for about three seconds to build up the adrenaline before you drop. Now, of course, with a normal roller coaster, you couldn't do this because as soon as you leave the top of the chain lift, you're actually rolling under gravity. So your, your movement from the top of the chain lift is actually controlled by a series of quite complicated conveyors. Uh, one of them being a vertical chain conveyor that's the reverse of, of the lift that we're climbing at the moment. So that you are engaging on a chain and that chain then holds you at the top of the precipice for three seconds. For most people it feels like 33 seconds, it feels like an eternity but you're just held there for three seconds and then a clutch releases and the chain allows you to drop. From that moment on you really are free running. So we're now engaging on that chain conveyor now. It's now stopping, pausing, the clutch is going to release and away we go. Oblivion plunges 180 feet in just 2.2 seconds. But even this is not enough for some sensation seekers. 